Abraham out of, out of Earl of the Chaldees. He just said, separate yourself and uh, follow me. Didn't tell him where he was going. And I don't uh, quite understand how it all worked out. But as I read through the scriptures, uh, Abraham's faith weaned sometimes. Uh, and he even stepped out of the will of God on occasion. But God chose him to be the father of the faithful. No matter what he did, God maintained that commitment that he made with him. And you and I are no different. When you and I made a covenant with the Lord and we repented of our sins and we obeyed the gospel by being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins according to the scripture, we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost according to the scripture. Uh, then he sealed us with that Holy Spirit of promise as the down payment to what's coming. And uh, he's not going to let that go away. The only way that's going to go away is by our choice. And as I can say it this way, as the heat is being raised up uh, relative to our world, uh, they just keep uh, recycling their same arguments and uh, I'm reminded of the scripture that talks about how the the dog goes back to its uh, vomit and uh, just continues to regurgitate that our world is regurgitating uh, themselves into what they think is is going to be an, an answer but it, it's never ever normalcy is never going to come back if if you want to look at normalcy or consider normalcy it's headed in one direction and that's the direction that the Lord has chosen it to go amen yes. and so uh, thankfully that uh, he said we can come boldly before his throne of grace and I, I hope you do that quite often and uh, there's nothing wrong with questioning but when all is said and done it's not my will but his in mine as I was talking with him this morning, the uh, thought of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 came into my spirit. And uh, it's no secret that as you read through the scriptures, the, the warnings that the Apostle Paul uh, spoke of, uh, of how the end times would be. Uh, of course, many reference Matthew chapter 24 and Jesus' account of how things were going to unfold and, and some of the things. And it was in response to his disciples asking him, when, when shall these things happen? Uh, and uh, the Bible is relative to those that read it and seek God and align their lives with it. It's not just a religious book uh, that... Uh, we periodically read, as you've heard me say, some some people read it uh, through every year, and, and it's a good thing to read the scripture, uh, but more importantly, to ponder what the words say, and to be able to study what the words say, and, and, and have a concordance, or have the tools necessary to be able to uh, pick a certain topic and follow it through, um, a lot of times people take the interpretation of the word based on whoever's delivering that word. If they happen to be popular, if they happen to be gifted, uh, people will believe every word that comes out of their, their mouth. And uh, I believe in, in trusting. More importantly, I believe in trying the spirits, as the Bible says. Uh, because even great men of God have fallen and been seduced by the spirit of darkness. Um, I want to talk tonight, or I'd say the Holy Ghost just wants us to focus on this one scripture. Again, we're in the last days. Uh, Paul said that perilous times would come. I, I believe by what I'm seeing and hearing, we're in the last days. I don't think there's any doubt of it. Everything that Paul lists from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the first uh, three verses, four verses, uh, we see those characteristics more prevalent. You know, now sometimes my wife and I will, will talk about, 
you know, how this never was back in our day. And this, you, know, you flash back to when we were younger. It's amazing how when you're young, you want to become old. But then when you're old, you want to go back to being young. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, even Paul said to the church that, that, you know, at my departing, there are going to be individuals uh, come into the church. They're going to be wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. Uh, so the Holy Ghost had, had warned uh, and he wrote of some of the things that would happen, some of the things that would unfold uh, to the seven churches of Asia in the book of Revelations. Jesus, uh, to most of those churches, was, uh, uh, you know, admonitions uh, and in some cases rebuke. Um, we are not prone to a protected per se from the events that are going to unfold relative to what the Bible teaches, we have to be prepared for them. We have to be able to recognize them. We have to be able to discern um, and gift of discernment is one of the gifts of the Spirit. We, we have to be able to pick up, if I can say it that way, on what is truth and what is error. Mm -hmm. And any kind of truth our proposed truth that we would want to believe or stand upon, there's got to be a confirmation in the Holy Ghost. And I've been taught that when you have peace in any given situation, you usually that's a sign that, that okay. But if your peace is interrupted or disrupted by what something says or by what event takes place, uh, you should be able to recognize that. The scripture says that that, you know, God, God, he, there is no variableness with him. There is no shadow of turning with him. He's a constant God. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, he doesn't, he doesn't accommodate culture. He doesn't accommodate the, the thinking of man. Uh, he doesn't even accom accommodate uh, religious, different uh, religious entities. And it never ceases to amaze me how we can have one Bible but such a multiplicity of Christian belief. Uh, it, just, it just blows my mind. That fact alone should have us to be on guard saying, hey, wait a minute, something isn't right here because my God's not the author of confusion. If he told me I needed to repent of my sins, be buried with him in baptism, and receive his spirit, in order to be born again, if he's going to tell me and you that, he's going to tell everybody that. Uh, but it just goes to show you how historically the adversary has done a very good job in separating and, 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 and dispersing uh, the true faith that the first century church contended for. And I'm thankful that God is bringing us back to content for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And it can be substantiated by Scripture, but more importantly, it can be substantiated by the, our own experiences that we have with Him. Praise God. Uh, and, and for that, I, I am grateful. Paul said to Timothy, having in verse uh, 2 Timothy 3, 5, having a form, everybody say a form, of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away can I say tonight that the Holy Ghost is not concerned with hurting somebody's feelings if you look at Jesus when he walked on the earth he was very adamant with the religious hypocrites of his day. He called them a generation of vipers. He called them whitewashing sepulchers. Uh, he was repulsed by the fact that they stood in a position where they should have known the Word of God, known the Scriptures, explained and taught the Scriptures to the people that they were over but instead they taught them the commandments of men not the commandments of God and Jesus let them know that 
And so it is today we have a Word of God. We have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in us all. It's not a multiplicity of gods. God's not going to tell one person one thing and somebody else something else, somebody else some, uh, something else. Uh, God is a consistent God. He never changes. But Paul said that in the last days, as he starts this, this chapter, uh, perilous times would come. There are going to be false prophets manifested. Yes, sir. There are going to be liars manifested. There are going to be people that are deceived by an adversary that can appear as an angel of light. Satan can approach us with a Bible under arm and say, praise the Lord. And we have to be discerning in these times because Jesus said, I believe it's in Matthew 24, that things were going to unfold that to such a degree that if it were possible, even the very elect themselves would be deceived. I am thankful that He's given me a love for truth. He's given me a hunger for the Word of God. I love to study the Word of God. I don't have all the answers like you. I'm pursuing Him. Let me read you these, this uh, verse and a couple of other translations. The Amplified Classics says this, For although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid all such people. Turn away from them. I believe that in these last days there may be acquaintances that you're acquainted with and I'm acquainted with that we may have to separate ourselves from those acquainted. If two of us can't agree together or if two don't agree together, what, what's going to happen to them? They'll both fall into the ditch. So we need to understand that what we hear, what we listen to, uh, what we're connected to in, in the spirit, the people we're connected to, we need to be careful that uh, we don't allow what's inside of them to get onto us. There can be a transference of things from one person to another person. And I believe that, that we as people of God, Holy Ghost filled people of God, must understand that there is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one, one truth. Praise God. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. Make you free. The contemporary English version says, even though they will make a show of being religious, their religion won't be real. Now, you and I would read that. So how, how can that not be? They'll praise the Lord like we praise the Lord. They'll, they'll even speak in tongues. They'll even uh, be involved in, in, in ministry and be laborers, etc., etc., etc. But they'll deny and reject. Even though they'll make a show of religious beliefs, their religion won't be real, don't have anything to do with such people. Now this is hard for you and I to grasp because we're, we want to be loving and we can be. We want to be polite and we can be. I, I've stood behind this pulpit and, and they have said that uh, God is going to reveal his name and who he is to a lot of Christian believers that are out there that seek him, that, are, that want to know him. I believe that's going to happen. But there are going to be others that, that they're going to reject what God wants to do, reveal to them. And that rejection, not only will it be at him, but it may be towards those that do love truth and do hold this truth precious. And Paul says, don't have anything to do with them. You know, I don't find any place in Scripture where Jesus chased somebody down and begged them to follow him. When Elisha uh, told Elijah... I've got some business to take care of. The prophet said, go ahead, do what you got to do. And we're at a point now where I believe the Lord will send people across our paths. Or should I say the devil will send people across our paths. As one pastor I served under told me, the devil will send people across your path where they will be nothing but a black hole to you. 
They will waste your time. They will drain your energy. And we're living in that kind of period of time and we need to be able to discern that. Jesus. Kenneth Weiss, an expanded Greek translation of this verse, says, having a mere outward semblance of piety towards God, but denying the power of the same, and these be constantly shunning. So we can see from a scriptural standpoint, again, this is Paul talking about the last days. There's other places. There's other places that Paul uh, warned of the apostasy that would take place. I, I wish it wasn't so. I really wish it wasn't so. I, I, I remember as a, a new believer finding, you know, finding out something somebody did or, or you know, experiencing some of the things uh, that I experienced and I just couldn't believe it. I, I said, how can these people have the Holy Ghost and be acting this way? Doesn't their Holy Ghost warn them about this? Doesn't the Holy Ghost tell them about this? And, and it just, uh, you realize early on that there's a human factor to this. That's right. and, and not everybody that says, hallelujah, praise the Lord, really means it. Not everybody that says I'm a believer is really a believer. Now, we're all in the same process and we all accept that growth is essential, but our spirit can discern when somebody's genuine and when somebody's a phony, when somebody's genuine and somebody's a counterfeit. And one of the key areas of discernment is if the person that you're dealing with, talking with, uh, is teachable. I'll never forget when somebody that was dear to me that had been walking in truth, walked away from truth, and then attempted to con convince me that there was a trinity in the Godhead. And, it, it, and I, I, you know, it, it didn't, the approach didn't throw me off. It was, how in the world can you be walking in revelational truth for all these years and then all of a sudden decide that there's a triune deity? And so we need to be able to discern when somebody says something uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses of the word, uh, be able to, to, to find it in the scripture. Every word that comes out of my, our mouth relative to God and godliness and eternity in the Christian faith, we should be able to substantiate it out of the word of God, not just be a parrot to what somebody else says. I don't want a form of godliness. Come on. I don't want a form of godliness. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where he mentions, again, he's, he's bringing to light some of the things that would unfold uh, in the last days. And I believe these people really believe that Jesus could have come back in their time. They were expecting Jesus to return in their time. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 Starting at verse 1, Paul says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind. Everybody say mind. mind. Our mind is the battlefield of warfare. And the Bible is clear on how we're to protect our mind. Protect our mind with the scripture, the word of God. And uh, he also says, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us. Praise God. I mean, that, that sentence there encompasses a, a whole lot of activity when it comes to us being human beings and being able to filter things uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost that's in, it, in us. Uh, people are affected by what people say. Uh, people are affected by the rolling of the eyes. People are affected by uh, accusation, uh, intimidation in some way, shape, or form. And in, and in this hour, it's like you're afraid to express how you feel about something or what you're thinking about something because of the repercussions that may happen and what you see taking place all around you. That's going to affect your spirit. That will definitely bring a, a sense of, of low self-esteem or, or will cause you to, uh, uh, you know, 
pull yourself in uh, and, and not be uh, outward and, and bold in the spirit and bold to make the declarations of truth that, that you hold dear. And Paul was letting these people know, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, don't be, don't let this get into your mind. Don't be troubled in, in your spirit. Uh, and if, if, if they tell you that it's a word from us, uh, or you receive something in writing that, that it's from us, and it talks about that the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. There is going to be a falling away. There is going to be a falling away of today's Christian. Is going to walk away from truth because of the pressure. And because of the, the dark influence that has covered this earth. There are going to be believers that are going to walk away from truth. Because it won't agree with their lifestyle. It won't agree with their thoughts. Uh, people say, oh, God told me this and God told me that. Uh, or, you know, the Holy Ghost is directing me here. And I can hear from God. And, I, you know, God knows me. But yet their words, their actions, their lifestyle, their attitude totally contradicts what the scripture teaches. Those people, Paul said, is to shun them. Separate yourself from them. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, Paul goes on to also uh, mention, he uses a, a word that, that says expressly, and it, it means outspokenly or distinctly. I am, I am thankful that God doesn't try to pull the wool over our eyes. He says what he means. He means what he says. He's written it. It's forever settled. And, you know, even when Satan came to him when he was uh, in the wilderness time of temptation and, and tried to fool him with the Word of God, uh, Jesus reached for the Word of God and he used the Word of God to defeat the temptation that came against him. And that is no different than you and I today. He's the example of what we reach for when it comes to dealing with some of the lies and some of the deception and some of the stuff that's happening and going on in our life. There should be no doubt in, in our mind. There, there should be nothing that's, that's shaking our spirit or troubling our, our spirit or, or causing our, our mind to, to, to go in, in a direction that, that's, that's not of God. And so... Paul says, 1 Timothy 4 and 1, Now the Spirit speaketh outspokenly or distinctly that in the latter times, everybody say the latter times, we're in the latter times, some shall. It ain't going to be, it's not maybe, it's not uh, this might happen. Some shall depart from the faith. And it may be people you and I have been connected to all along. I've seen it happen in my day now. Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits. Seducing spirits and the doctrine of the teaching of devils. So when when Paul's writing of, of the apostasy that's that's going to unfold in the latter times, how there will be a great falling away, how there will be people that will depart from the faith. They will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. That should be an alarm to you and I that love truth and that are walking in these latter times, these last days, to make sure that what we're listening to is the voice of God. What we're hearing is the voice of God. Now, we're able to identify in Scripture. We're not just hearers of the Word. We're doers of the Word. We can take you to the Scripture. Or we can take somebody to the Scripture and say, Wait a minute. Wait. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Word of God says. And be able to dot all our I's and cross all our T's. And say, This is why we live the way we live. And we walk the way we walk. And believe the way we believe. Because it is written, we're contending for the same faith that the apostles of Jesus Christ 
contended for in the very beginning. You read through Jude, and even in his time, false teachers had infiltrated the church. It's not any different now. Churches have risen up uh, where they're, you know, it's it's just, it's like one big party in, in the church. Yes, they praise the Lord, and, and yes, they uh, they have music, and they, they, they do their thing, and they make people feel happy, and their people are able to escape the doldrums of the chaos of their life, but they come in, but there's no conviction of sin. There's no life-changing conviction that brings change to their life. They continue to live the same way, walk the same way, believe the same way. And, and sin is justified, and whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. I'm, I'm not saying that they, they uh, blatantly pr promote sin, but there's no separation. God requires His people to be separated unto Himself. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. And so the people of God are supposed to be unique. The people of God are supposed to be different than the people of the world. But world Christianity wants to blend in so everybody else feels comfortable with us. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. Even to say that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for today. Even to say that the gifts of the Spirit are not for today. According to Barnes' New Testament notes on but denying the power thereof, he writes, opposing the real power of religion, not allowing it to exert any influence in their lives. It imposes no restraint on their passions and carnal tendencies, but in all respects, except in the form of religion, they live as they had done. And sadly, when you say to people that Jesus is the answer to your life and Jesus can, can help you in this, with this addiction or Jesus can put your marriage back together again or Jesus can give you joy unspeakable and full of glory, they're willing to accept that and they want it. But then they find out, oh, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that I, I've got to restrict myself? I, well, you're not your own. Jesus paid the price for your eternal life. You don't live the way you want to live. Amen. You live the way He wants you to live. Yes. He orders your steps. He, if I can say it this way, He calls the shots. Amen. Yes, sir. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16 says they profess that they know God, but in works. Everybody say in works. In works. In works. You know, people many times take the scripture of grace and out of Ephesians chapter 2 and they say by grace are, are, are we saved by faith. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But you'd be hard pressed to take that one verse and make a doctrine out of it to, to say that you know, that I'm, I'm, okay, I'm saved. Yes, we believe. We believe in grace. We believe it's God's grace that saves us. We believe it's God's grace that sets us free. Uh, Paul said, such were some of you. Now you're washed. Now you're sanctified. Now you're just. It was grace that brought us through that door. But once grace reveals that to you, and once grace uh, shows what the gospel is, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you have to do something with that. You've got to identify it. It's easy to say, oh, I accept Jesus as my Savior and move on and continue walking down the path that you're continuing. Mm -hmm. But if you don't identify with, with Jesus' death through repenting and turning your life fully over to Him, if you don't identify with being buried with Him in baptism, Romans 6, if you don't identify with being filled with His resurrection spirit, and then walking in that newness of life, be allowing the Spirit to continually transform you, offering yourself to Him as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That is our reasonable, our reasonable service, not being conformed to this world, 
but being transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind. What renews our mind? The Word of God. What makes the Word of God active is the Spirit of God. And God's not going to send us astray. God's not going to, going to. He's, he, he's not going to, you know, send us this way, send us that way, do this. Do, God doesn't cause us to jump through hoops. He, he, he lays the word out. He says, this is what you need to do. And when we do it, we're pleasing with him. He doesn't have to explain it to us. He doesn't have to tell us the details. He doesn't have to tell us what this is what's going to happen. He gives us his word and he expects us to take one step one foot at a time and walk in obedience before him doing what he tells us hearing what he tells us and paul said in this titus they profess that they know god but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate we can't have it both ways we can't have a self-will where I say I'm going to do what I want and nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to go where I want. And, you know, you, you know what? They're reprobate. They're unapproved. They're rejected. In God's eyes, they're worthless. I don't care how much they say I hear from God. I don't care how much they say I know God. It does not line up with Scripture. The witness of Scripture. Sure. Not the witness yeah. of Pastor Kevin Horn. Yeah. Not the witness of the United Pentecostal Church. Yeah. It does not align with the witness of Scripture. Yeah. And Jesus said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Mm -hmm. So we establish our lifestyle with Scripture. Our doctrine with Scripture. The activities we, we are involved in with Scripture. It's got to be that way. Paul said in the last days they would have a form of godliness. That word form that's used in, in that text, 2 Timothy 3, 5. It means a, appearance or a semblance. If there was anybody that's a, 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 a master at deception and disguise, it's the adversary. Yes, sir. And he knows whether you and I know the word of God or not. When Eve told him in Genesis 3 that God said not to touch that fruit of that tree, he knew he had it. Because God never said anything about not touching it. He knew she didn't know the word of God. And when somebody professes or makes a profession that they've got it all together... But yet their life and their actions, their attitudes and their motives are contrary to what the scripture teaches. Then he has them hook, line and sinker. It means appearance. It means semblance. It's the Greek word is morphosis. You've heard the word metamorphosis, a caterpillar to a butterfly. According to Vines, it says a form or outline. It denotes in the New Testament an image, an impression. And so having a form of godliness, they have a, a, an outline of godliness. They might look God. They might even dress the, the part. But inside, they're full of dead men's bones. Godliness. Word means piety. Being religious or reverent. According to the complete word study Bible dictionary, the word is Eusebia. It literally means well-directed reference, but does not apply an inward inherent holiness. It is actually an externalized piety. They look the part. They, they walk, they, they could pass as a Holy Ghost filled, holy living believer. But it's only on the outside and not on the inside. And Paul said in the last days, it would be people like that. They would have a form of godliness. The word denying means literally to contradict. According to Vine's complete expository dictionary, it means to deny, renounce, reject. In late Greek, it came to signify to refuse, to acknowledge, to disown, and is translated to refuse. They deny the power. They deny 
the manifestation of the miraculous. They may even want to say, oh, I want the miraculous. I want to see the miraculous. But they deny it. They say it was for the apostles only because they needed to walk in the miraculous power in order to preach the gospel around the world. According to the scripture, my dear friends, it does not, it says that, I believe it's in Ephesians, I think it might be chapter 1, uh, where it talks about coming behind in no gift. Meaning the, the, the gifts of the Spirit have not ended, ended. They are part of the church. They are part of the body of Christ. They are desperately needed at this time. We need to manifest, you and I, the church alive needs to manifest the gifts of the spirit so that people's faith would not be in what we say or what we we necessarily do but their faith would be in the lordship of jesus christ because the holy ghost working through us will do the work and so it's easy for people to contradict what the scripture says because it's not it's not <coughs> popular the times demand, 2024 demands that you, you need to think the way we're thinking. You, you need to believe what we say. This is how it is. This is how a man is. This is how a woman is. This, this is what truth is. And they contradict and renounce and refuse to acknowledge and they disown apostolic ministry and apostolic power. And they set, settle for something so shallow. That all it is is good words and, and mm -hmm. tickle your ears and, and, you know, tell me what I want to hear, preacher. And there's no conviction of sin. There's no conviction of, of repentance. There's, there's no turning away from ungodliness. The word power in that verse means inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth. You know, when those, uh, when those young college folks last year, I forget what college it was, where they were Asbury, where they were receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, why do you think God responded to that? He responded to that because of their hunger, because of their desire to maybe, just maybe, they looked in the book and they said, hey, wait a minute. They received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues when it happened. Let, let's seek that. Let's, and they were there for hours, my understanding of it. We had one of our young men went on, on site and prayed through a few of them. And I believe uh, some of them are attending uh, the United Pentecostal Church now. That wasn't some dream. That wasn't some trick. That was the reality of truth that God has offered to every single human being on the face of the earth. Praise God. Aren't you glad he's not a respecter of persons? Amen. Inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. <laughs> if, you, if you take something and, and, and you say, this is, this is this handkerchief. This handkerchief was used for me to wipe my mouth every now and then and, and uh, blow my nose if I have to or cough into or whatever. You know, but... You know, you pick something up and it's got a certain uh, component to it and this is what it's used for, and, but yet it's not being used for that and it's just kind of laying on the side or just collecting dust or, or, or rusting away. It's, it, it's out of place. And there's a power that is out there for people to be able to have if they'll just seek Him with all of their heart, all of their mind, all of their soul because He's not a respecter of persons. Thank you. He intended it for it to be one way and one way only. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God and you will not see the kingdom of God. So if I just have a form of godliness, if I'm denying the apostolic Holy Ghost miraculous power from working in me, and I've got to ask myself, wait a minute, something's off here. It's either me or the book. And don't tell me it's my interpretation or somebody else's interpretation. Do you think God would really put his word out there and leave that as an excuse for somebody not understanding or receiving? 
The reason why they don't understand is re uh, receive is because their heart is hardened. They have a stiff neck. They can't turn to see and find truth. So to certain ones, to them, it's giving to understand and know. But to the one that is hard of heart and has no interest uh, to look at what the, the, the teachings of Jesus Christ or the word of God to, to seek it and apply it to their lives, they're never going to learn. And they'll continue in the blindness that the God of this world has placed upon him. And they'll continue to have a form of godliness. They'll continue to deny the power thereof. And according to the word turn away, it means to deflect, i.e. avoid and shun. I'm thankful for biblical truth. thankful for the day that God found me where I was and I was brought up in religious tradition that fits some of this and by the mercy of God he brought me to a place of repentance he brought me a place of understanding the true apostolic message of baptism in Jesus name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost he, he brought me to a place of separation from the world Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.16, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Don't find yourself engaged in arguments and, and all the other, as he says here, vain babblings. Allow the Holy Ghost in you to give you the wisdom to uh, either give a, a godly, honest answer or walk away and say, I, I don't need that. Because your spirit will pick up when somebody comes to whisper something in your ear. Your spirit will pick up. You'll lose that sense of peace. And that would be should be alarm enough to say, I don't think so. I, I really don't want to talk about this. I don't need to hear this. 2 Timothy 2.23 in the Passion Translation. Stay away from all the foolish arguments of the immature. For these disputes will only generate more conflict. Isn't it, isn't it sad? It's saddening that many of the wars that happen around the world is due to, to religious beliefs and, and ethnicity between uh, cultures and human beings. It's, I wish it wasn't so, but that's the way it is, isn't it? Stand with me tonight. Oh, praise God, I don't want to have a form of godliness. I don't want to deny the power. There is a power of spirit that you and I can walk in and that you and I can have. Sadly, some have taught that it's only for ministry or only for those that walk in an elite spiritual position that is a lie from the pit of hell if you have the holy ghost god can manifest any one of those nine gifts of the spirit in you and through you and by you Amen. the question we have to ask ourselves in these last days as we head towards the finish line am i going to have a form of godliness am i going to deny god from working in me and through me to have his way and to be able to use me to seek and to save that which is lost. Am I going to have a form of godliness and deny that power? Or am I going to be a conduit for him to use in these last of the last days? Paul went on to say in 2 Timothy 3 verse 6, For this sort they were already in the church when he was writing these words. It was already a manifestation of these characteristics in people. And you and I, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to pray that God gives us such a love for truth and such a desire just to give ourselves to him, to, to, to just to seek him constantly. I know life is busy, but if you're not praying, and I'm not talking about a now I lay me down to sleep prayer. If you're not engaging with the Holy Ghost on a regular basis, it's going to be extremely hard for you to survive the end times. Extremely hard. And I thank God for my past experiences. I thank God where he's brought me, 
what he's taught me. I thank God for the word I've memorized. But it's not good enough. We, we have to have what's going to match the times and the season that we're walking in. I mean, you read any kind of story about uh, individuals during wartime that were taken as prisoners of war. Uh, many that survived, it was their past experiences that they had memorized, that they kept reminding themselves and talking to themselves about it so they wouldn't, wouldn't go crazy. And, and, and you and I have been called into these end times for a purpose. God doesn't want us to have a form of godliness. He wants us to walk in that godliness. He wants us to walk in that power. He wants us to turn our world upside down. The people we work with, the people we live with, the people we know, our families, there's got to be something inside of us that lets them know that this is real, that lets them know that Jesus is real. And that's where we're headed. That's what we're pursuing. And sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's easy. It's hard when I allow my flesh to dictate and mandate my feelings and my thinking. But if I allow the Spirit of God to dictate to me what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking. And it comes very, very easy. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, for biblical truth that you have given to us. We thank you for continuing to work with us and that your promise of finishing the work that you started in us. I pray in Jesus' name that we would not allow those of little faith to steal our confidence in what you're doing in this hour, where you're taking us in this hour. You're doing a new thing. And I pray that there would be an impartation of trust and identity to realize who we are. That our faith would exceed what our natural eyes see. That we would be able to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. I pray it be imparted into us right now. The mind of Christ Jesus. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear. In Jesus' name, Lord. We're believing it tonight. We're standing upon it tonight. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. God richly bless you. We'll see you on Sunday. In the name of the Lord.